Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Grand Tactician, the Civil War, our Union Let's Play of this game. Uh, it is May of 1862, and the war is going pretty well for us. We've taken Nashville, we've taken Knoxville. Uh, General Grant has just defeated two Confederate armies and their effort to eject him from eastern Tennessee and have begun planning for the next phase of operations. I have split the Army of, the, of Kentucky, which was at Nashville. Uh, we are taking about 8,000 of those troops and forming a new corps. So essentially, we're, keeping, we're forming two new corps, the 3rd and the 4th Corps. We're putting the 3rd Corps under General Sherman, who had commanded a division before. We've elevated Sumner to the Army Command. Um, and I, I, I named the Army Command the 3rd Corps, apparently. I need to rename that. And then we have we have put Buell, who used to command an army but did a poor job, in command of the 4th Corps. And so the 4th Corps will basically just consist of one division under Major General or Brigadier General John Reynolds and one Cavalry Brigade, which will raise under Colonel William Robinson. The 3rd the Corps under Sherman will consist of two divisions, one under John Fremont, and one under the newly elevated Winfield Scott Hancock. Um, and so Sherman's troops will consist of about 20,000 troops, while uh, uh, Buell's troops will consist of about 8,000, so just shy of 30,000 for the entire Army of the Kentucky. And then what we're going to do is we're going to move these 20,000 men south uh, toward Chattanooga, uh, and then we will, or maybe, maybe toward Decatur. In any event, we'll move them south uh, from uh, Nashville, and we'll move the 8,000 men under... Uh, under General Buell, who have now transported up into Kentucky, will move them south and west of, I believe, the Tennessee River, I think this is, um, and we will uh, move them toward Jackson, Tennessee. And so the goal of Sumner's, or of, of Buell's force, is to secure the left side of the river out toward Memphis and western Kentucky. The goal of the Third Corps is to consolidate control over central Kentucky, Basically everything, everything west of uh, of this river here, and I believe the Cumberland River, I think that is, but I'm not sure. And then we will take uh, Grant's army, which is already securing the eastern bank of that river in eastern Tennessee, and drive it either into east and western North Carolina or move south into uh, down toward Chattanooga, perhaps. Um, and so the goal will be to basically take Tennessee off the board as a state and begin penetrating deep into the heart of the Confederacy. Meanwhile, we are also in the process of advancing uh, the Department of the West, uh, currently in northern Arkansas, with the eventual goal of taking uh, Batesville and then driving south toward Little Rock to take the capital of Arkansas down there. The risk is obviously that there are Confederate forces which could flank us. Arkansas isn't as clearly laid out for our advance. But I don't think that's going to be the topic of this particular episode. I think we're about to see a battle fought here in the, the southern portion of the Shenandoah Valley, I believe with Major General Robert Patterson and his 28,000 soldiers facing an overwhelming Confederate force uh, that may be trying to get uh, out and flank our positions in Virginia. Um, the Army of the Potomac, meanwhile, is getting ready to advance south. It has two corps of about 20,000 men, uh, but they're not ready yet for an advance toward Richmond. And so to that point, I think that the most likely uh, result is a battle here in the southern end of the Shenandoah Valley. And if we go ahead and fast forward, we'll see that's indeed what occurs. We can see the lead Confederate elements attacking our 28,000 men or 6,400 troops in the Army of the Potomac. We also have 11,000 men in the Army of the Northwest, which are about an hour away. Hampton's division about an hour away. And the South Carolina State Militia about three hours away. So within three hours, we'll have 41,000 Confederates facing off against 25,000 Federals. The Confederates have been defeated, so their morale is probably low. But then again, two Union brigades have low morale as well. And so with that being said, let's go ahead and jump in and fight the battle. The Battle of Staunton, Virginia. They outnumber us just shy of two to one. Assuming all the Confederate forces make it to the field. So we are going to be on the defensive in this battle. We can see there's four objectives all currently occupied by us. All roughly in the same spot, like same 
I don't know, latitude. So the question is, where do we want to deploy our troops? We are in the defense of the Confederates have this on map position. And that looks to be it. So presumably they're all going to come from here. It's the Appomattox Courthouse battlefield. Interesting. We do have 45 engineer points, so we can dig dig in. Since I think they'll all come up this main road, and they'll either go through the town here or up this road. I'm wondering if it makes sense to deploy our troops on these heights down here. So this hill here. Move north through these woods and then toward Wild Legrand. Be just slightly out of reach. But would be out ahead of the objectives. Could advance this way though. But since we're outnumbered, we kind of have two options for strategy, I think. We can either wait for them to come to us or we can go to them. I like the idea of putting these guns on this elevation. At least some of the batteries. And then I think we'll put two of the batteries up to the north. We'll take one infantry division under Crittenden, move it into single line, and deploy it here. Guarding this roadway. I don't want to attach it to the river. So we'll form these guys up in kind of a semicircular position on this hill down here. To guard against an approach there. We'll deploy Keem's division or Kilm's division to the north on these heights. Doesn't look like I'll be quite able to put these guys where I want. So no entrenchments for these guys up here in the north. Cadwallader's division, I think. Form up in single line. This wood, wooded terrain here to protect them. So we've got a nice firm, I think, firm hold on the southern position here, I think. We'll put Crook's Cavalry kind of in the gap between these divisions. And then the final division will deploy here. Meanwhile, we might as well entrench the troops in the south. I never know which direction to face the trench. Oops. Okay, yeah, that'll do. Okay.
really bad at like linking these trenches up in a coherent line. Be nice if the fortifications clicked a little bit better. There's pretty much always going to be a gap here. I don't know why my Sharps troops have low morale. I think they'd be happy. They, they fought really well last battle. Guys need to dismount. Well, yeah. I don't think they're actually dismounted yet, but they should be. There we go. And I can't really build trenches or earthworks up in the north, so we'll just have to settle for what we've got. I'm not sure if there's much value in putting guns in entrenchments. In theory, I guess we could do parapets. I'm curious how that would... Or breastworks. I'm curious how that would... If it would help. I guess it does give them some cover. By the looks of it. I don't know if it interrupts their field of fire though. Okay, so they've got a nice elevation there. Patterson probably on the left or our left flank, which we can't really get to here right away. So we'll go ahead and hit play. All right. So that begins the deployment there. So we're going to go ahead and have Keem's division or Keem's division move down here. They do come up this road. They'll be a little bit more exposed. Our troops, that is. So let's actually deploy these guys a little bit differently. Let's deploy them like this. Whoops. Can we actually just halt these guys? Wouldn't halt the whole command. Waiting for the order to go through. That halts them. Should come up from Patterson, who isn't too far away. Sir, I want you to halt your command. Did I only issue the order to the one brigade? All right, so let's go back. And let's take a look here. We'll go ahead and deploy him here. Second brigade here. Third brigade on the other side of that here. 
And then we'll deploy the artillery as such. Okay. That should do it. Wish we had more troops coming, but we can live with this. Now, I have not fought on this particular battlefield before, so it'll be interesting here. I imagine we may shift troops from the southern section of our line forward. We've got a little bit of a fish hook position down here, and I would think we may end up shifting some of these guys north. But we'll see. Okay, let's get those troops into position. All right, so they can other two other Confederate forces have arrived. So let's also get these guys to work on parapets or breastworks. So we'll get these guys to work get these guys to work constructing those barricades. And we'll get the artillery to work. Alright, so these guys are deploying. Not quite where I had originally planned for them to deploy, but Those guys are constructing their earthworks to guard this road so they can't just get marched right by. And there you have it. So those men are working. And then we can pull individual brigades out. We've got a nice little road behind our line that we can then use to shuttle troops north if that's where the end enemy ends up going. And it's already also 1,300 hours, so it's possible we get to nightfall before the battle actually starts. The objectives are back here, which is what's going to lure the Confederates in. So if they're coming up from this roadway, they may take the right fork and then move down the Prince Edward Courthouse Road. Or they could take the left fork and move on a slightly less direct route up through Cheatham. Toward my impregnable... No, I shouldn't say impregnable, but toward my... Uh, Pretty intensive works down that way. These breastworks are also long enough that I can put more troops in them if they shift from the south. Okay, so we're moving troops into position in the north. We're going to build breastworks there. We've built entrenchments or parapets in the south. And at this point, it's going to be a little while before we actually make contact with the enemy. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward here. It's going to be day two of the battle before we really see anything happen. So let's go ahead and jump forward a little bit until there's more to report. Okay, it's nighttime of the first day of the battle. We didn't detect the enemy, and so we are using our remaining engineering points to build up really elaborate defenses in the south. You can see we're throwing, I don't know if there's like chivalry, to, I don't know how you pronounce it, but basically stakes and obstacles in front of our lines in the south, while our positions in the north are being turned into full-blown trenches where they were only breastworks. And that's where we're going to rejoin this thing here as we move into the second day's fight, as we still search for the enemy, or I guess as we hope they search for us. Okay, well, let's see where the Rebs come. We've got the fortifications in the north now if we need them. We've got incredibly strong fortifications in the south. And we'll just have to see where the Rebs come. We could send some cavalry out to scout these guys and figure out where exactly they are. Might not be a bad idea. Alright, let's go try and find these guys. Mounted our horsemen up. Get them out there. Maybe we can wait an 
another day and build our entrenchments up even more. No sign of the enemy yet. Despite the way the deployment looked to me. It's 6.30 in the morning. Rebs haven't... Oh, shit, I think we see them. Enemy guns are moving up this road, so they are moving... Just got a red, a flash of red there. So I think they're going to move up this roadway. So let's shift our infantry north. All right, this line's going to end just south of that road. Deploy these guys here. And then we'll move our cavalry back. So it looks like these great works that we built up may not matter all that much. We'll take the flank brigade under Kimball and move it north as a reserve as well. And we're going to shift our artillery around. So we'll put three brigades into the trenches with one in reserve. Based on what our intelligence seems to have gleaned from the enemy moving their troops up. We'll have to move these horsemen over this way. How about you guys pull back? Don't get yourselves shot to pieces, but we did encounter the enemy. We then immediately withdrew or pulled back to try and engage my cavalry by the looks of it. Are they moving troops? I'm trying to see where they're going. Did I throw their whole line of march off? They're like, I don't know what to do now. Little bit of artillery fire going. Oh, shit, they're also moving up in the south. All right, well, maybe pulling that one brigade out and moving them north was unwise. Let's move the 4th Pennsylvania down to guard the flank. So it does look like they're forming some troops up here toward our southern entrenchments, although maybe they don't want to attack because they're immediately withdrawing Walker's brigade, perhaps upon seeing these obstacles and being subjected to some rifled artillery fire. They are deploying troops. We've shifted our own troops back down to the southern end of our southern fishhook. And then in the north, you can see a whole bunch of enemy troops also forming up that Cooper or Crook's Cavalry Brigade has spotted. I think we're going to move the cavalry over here to this flank. Let's see if we can't dig them in. The enemy having three armies, they definitely have some flexibility in how they deploy. Okay. But they're still deploying in the south. DR Jones, Hampton's Legion, and Walker's Brigade. Three brigades are formed up. One of them's hanging back. They look winded, so they're probably tired. They took a few casualties to artillery. Jones and Yule both laying down, taking a little bit of damage to artillery. Hampton coming up. So that's four brigades now identified in the south, south of this line. But they haven't begun the attack yet. Fast forward a little bit here. I 
And I think we'll want to deploy Brooks Cavalry here, and then we're gonna we're gonna build them some her muskets. I do, I hear muskets, so the enemy is trying to advance through this I don't know what it is exactly, the is it Chevo de Lou or whatever they're called? Um, casualties are not as lopsided as I, as I would have hoped. Third Brigade engaging them. So 40 to 70 so far. Just with Jones' lead brigade. Moving Hampton's brigade to the left as well. I wonder if those uh, earthworks actually give them cover. Hampton's now taking casualties from Williams. Burns is not quite in range. So we'll shift this brigade down to get, get into, into action. It's going to take him out of their entrenchments, but I don't want to leave Burns all by himself. guns in, in there. They're not currently firing. Six battery with its three inch ordnance rifles is firing. Hampton's being flanked. 180 to the 90, so about two to one. And then we're going to get uh, the second brigade under Rowley into action here. Against you. Okay. So pretty good fight forming up here in the south. Meanwhile, in the north, let's go ahead and get these guys. Working. As those enemy troops come up the road. So Yule's brigade is losing quite a few troops. Raleigh's troops not as much. 152 casualties so far with Burns' brigade. They're using the Lorenz rifle imported from Austria. Not quite two to one casualties inflicted on them. And then Williams' brigade is inflicting great, greatly superior casualties on the enemy than they've received. Presumably because I don't think they're really the receiver of a lot of this confederate fire. So we've got three rebel brigades attacking in the south. And I kind of think they're all firing on burns here based on the loss rates. Okay, meanwhile the enemy troops are approaching in the north led by the Virginia Brigade. Only 300 men left in that brigade. Followed up by Winder's Brigade, Anderson's Division of the Army of the Northwest. About 2,100 troops. And they're marching along that roadway. Just two brigades still in action. Looks like we routed in Hampton's Legion. Some of these Confederate units are pretty well bled down. from previous battles. Not the first time any of these troops in the south are fighting. All right, move those guns into the open. Fire on the rebel flank. And there you have it. I think the southern attack is probably a little bit of a diversion. Okay, so we've, there is another brigade, McBride's brigade that we've spotted. We just routed Jones's brigade, as well as Ewell's brigade. So about just shy of 50% casualty in Ewell. About a third casualties in Jones. 
And I think we've largely driven this attack back successfully here in the south. In the north, meanwhile, the enemy's just still getting into position. But that was a nice little fight. Walker and McBride are hanging around here. Let's take Raleigh's brigade and move it north. And we've engaged the enemy. At least enemy skirmishers. They have engaged my artillery in any event. Maybe also my sharps. Steel's brigade, that looks like a fresh one. A little duel is forming up in the south with some artillery trading fire. It's about 11 o'clock. Waiting to see what the rebels do. Walker's brigade. Uh, where are they going to go? I mean, I suppose they could try to march around our position here and flank us and drive us back on the objectives. But I don't care about those objectives. Okay. Hampton's Legion. Oops. I clicked the wrong button. Oh, shit. Get back there, guys. No, halt. Go back there. Don't let the enemy flank you. Some of these Confederate troops look like they're pretty experienced. Clayton's has three stars despite, well, they're relatively small. Okay. Walker's sending some skirmishers forward. We'll engage them, use up some ammo, drive them back. What are you guys going to do in the north here? Looks like they're pushing th three brigades forward. Musketry again. Just engaging enemy enemy artillery with our muskets, that's fine. They want to bring their guns up and try and smash us with rifle fire. I'm in trenches, I like my odds. and Hardy's brigades are on the field in the north. They're going right at the 5th Pennsylvania. These guys have incredible experience. Four stars. They're highly experienced troops with almost 3,000 men in their ranks. This is a consolidated brigade, so it's a very strong and very powerful. The enemy is coming up uncoordinated. They've got two more brigades stacked up coming up but they're just not coming in very intelligently, I don't think, so they're gonna kinda lose one brigade at a time. Okay, 
Let's bring Sykes up to support as well. And more skirmishers coming from Walker's Brigade. You want to let me keep killing your men in small drips and drabs? I'm fine with that. Cups boys. 29 casualties. They've inflicted over 150. Yeah, the AI has a heavy numerical advantage, but I don't really feel it so far. Sort of a piecemeal attack in the south, so far a piecemeal attack here in the north. I moved the 4th New York out of their trenches so they can fire into the into Winder's Brigade as well. Additional brigades coming up in the north, but they've already engaged their lead one, which is getting savaged. So I think this might be the baptism of by fire of the Lorenz rifle from that one brigade in our southern lines. I don't think we've used that in battle before. But the third brigade, which is sort of the key linchpin of defending the southern roadway, doing pretty well with its weapons, I think. 1400 hours some of our troops have started to burn through a considerable amount of their ammunition a whole bunch more confederate troops are on the road marching to the front but again they're all kind of stacked up one single file after another which is going to limit their ability to develop a considerable advantage in manpower basically letting us defeat them in detail Crooks troops into the enemy flank. Okay, Hardy's lost about forty five men. And another militia here. Not militia, but another skirmish line here. Okay. So we've got Crook, who is now firing into the enemy flank, although he is receiving fire from some enemy skirmishers. The sharp carbines do have a very high rate of fire, but they are taking some casualties. Is throwing the Confederate advance into a little bit of... Uh, Confusion, I think. I'm going to take a risk here and charge George's, George Sykes's brigade into the enemy lines. It looks like they're winded and falling back, so I would love to wear them down. Although now they're being flanked. Oh, they defeated Hardy's brigade in its melee combat. You can see it's red, so it's withdrawing. So if they can force it to surrender, that could be 2,600 enemy casualties. Or at least I want to pull Sykes back. He's... I don't want him fighting four or five enemy brigades all by himself. Alright, so Hardy's not going to surrender, but he is going to lose a fair number of casualties. Still says they're in melee, but it looks like the entire brigade has pulled back since... No, I think we destroyed the brigade. That's weird. Sometimes I feel like once you engage in melee combat, like, you you can't lose. 
one of the two brigades is going to surrender, even though they're like back in their own lines. It looks like they surrendered. Okay, that's brigade. So got a little bit of clumping of rebels in the north. Uh, did I just see rebs coming at our center? Cutshaw or something like that? Party's brigade, 1,700 men have been captured. Nice. But now bad things are happening. Let's pull back to these trenches. Get you guys out of there before you get overwhelmed. That's a nice little feather in our cap, if you will. So Sykes is pulling back. I should just mount these guys up and have them pull back. That was way faster. Why are you blinking red? Get back in your damn breastworks. Who's shooting now? More skirmishing in the south? Nope, that's full on fighting with Walker's brigade. Although I don't see musketry. Whoops. Alright, if they're gonna send skirmishers out this way, let's ride these fuckers down. Fix. Fix swords. Raise your sabers. Charge into the skirmishes. Wait, they broke? Really? They didn't inflict a single casualty? Oh, they definitely are. Okay, so now they're behind the breastworks. It does say their cohesion is broken, but I don't know how much that really matters in this particular situation. They're shooting up those enemy skirmishers nice and good with their sharps carbines. Release battalion of artillery in range. gonna fast forward a little bit see what the faster speed brings us okay so these skirmishers are driven back as well as two battalions of artillery one of my artillery pieces is actually low on ammo that's never happened before Okay. So is the enemy withdrawing? It looks like they're marching away. I'm wondering if they're withdrawing. And right, go attack these two brigades that are exposed. doing so times 10 speed but yeah
Go get them, boys. All right. Clayton Senior's Brigade's been kind of sort of routed. Yeah, I think the enemy's withdrawing. I just sent the 4th New York charging forward into a largely unbloodied rebel brigade, and I'm pretty sure it's going to rout anyway. And I think we're going to we're going to capture it. Steel's brigade is unbloodied. They may deflect my charge. Let's just engage them. Yeah, they're withdrawing for sure. I'm hoping I got one more of those rebel units to surrender for us. Where did my cavalry go? Did they book it? Oh, they just pulled back to here. Sharp's carbines are not terribly... Oh, I didn't mean for you to melee. Just fire volleys into them, boys. Or melee them. And get yourselves routed. Okay, so the enemy is withdrawing from the field. We're getting all sorts of notices about their brigades pulling back. All well, the Winders Brigade's coming up. They've actually taken a fair number of casualties, too. No, no, they're pulling back out. The enemy is retreating. It's only a minor victory because while we definitely savaged elements of their force, we didn't completely destroy enough of their troops. So I think the percentage of their losses will be relatively low compared to some of our really decisive battles in the past. But like Crook to charge these guys. Oh, never mind. Battle ended too fast. The Battle of Staunton, May 31st, 1862. A minor federal victory. 7,500 Confederate losses in their infantry. One third of their artillery versus just 1,600, I guess 2,000 Federals when you include our cavalry. Better than three to one. Another victory for the Union cause at the Battle of Staunton. Driving back four Confederate armies. I think part of the problem is at this point the Confederate morale in these armies is just so bad. And the AI is not aggressive with them. So they just shatter on first contact. General Crook has fallen into disgrace despite the fact that he led several what I think were successful cavalry charges in the last battle. I'll agree with that. Don't agree with that at all. Looks like we captured 6,200 rifles and 11 guns from the battlefield. We lost 2,088 men, 324 killed. The enemy lost 7,500 men of those 778 killed and 2,200 captured, so over 3,000 men removed from their ranks. And if you take a look here, the enemy is down to 67,000 men currently fielded versus almost 200,000 of our own. We've won 41 battles to only 9 Confederate victories. The war is going well. And it's just a matter of time until we push back on Richmond. I just need to get those troops readiness up a bit. All right, these rebel armies are going to pull back presumably toward Richmond. And we'll be into June of 1862. Meanwhile, our corps in the Army of the Potomac are almost ready to move. Lincoln needs a victory. We've been winning nothing but... All right, 
right. Hunter is into excellent readiness. The question is, do we wait till it's perfect? Runyon, less so. All right, agricultural policy two is completed. Sure, more bonds. So with ag policy two, we go with northern trade routes. We could go with, well, we've already done that industrialization level. Regulars. Print notes. Hmm. Confiscation would be fun. Why is some of this stuff grayed out? Okay. All right, these Confederate forces are camped out around Richmond. At this rate, it'll probably be a July offensive for us. In the east. Meanwhile, in Kentucky, has the third corps come down? Or the fourth corps come down? They have not. All right, you don't have any troops. Sumner, you're just a headquarters unit. So you should probably halt. Fourth Corps, meanwhile, is moving to the western side of Tennessee now. And I think we'll begin our invasion in earnest there. And the Department of the West probably could move on Little Rock. Also, how's Grant doing with the supply situation? He's doing much better. Okay. So let's have Grant move on Chattanooga, I think. That's a key Confederate city. And if we take a look at national morale, the Confederates are down to 51. I think their army breaks at 25. So they've lost pretty heavily. And if they lose more cities, that's going to increase the reduction there. I think the Army of the Potomac... Needs about one more month to get its two cores ready. Goddamn slow. I got a case of the slows. Meanwhile, we're rebuilding the garrison fort at Norfolk. It'll be done in about 60 days. We have repaired the fort at Macon. And so we are blockading out of Macon. Still has the Confederates blockading us. I, I'm not sure I quite get that, but it does say Wilmington's at 38% blockaded, which is nice. It's a pretty good percentage, I think. Okay. Elizabeth is 45%. Norfolk is what? Or Gasport Shipyard is 45%. Blackhawk, 45%. West Point, 45%. Rocks Landing, 45%. Okay. Well, with that being said, guys, I think that's going to do it for today's video. We saw yet another victory against the Confederate arms here in Virginia. And in our next episode, I assume we will begin our march down on Richmond. But until then, this is the Historical Gamer, as always, saying once again, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I'm out.